This is a production of Cornell University. Okay. Hello there. My name is Carl Scamenti with the Cornell Turf Grass Program. Uh, and today I'm going to walk everyone through how to use our uh, Turf and Landscape Weed ID tool. Uh, and this is an online resource that Dr. Jenny Cowniffin here at Cornell, our weed scientist, developed. Uh, she's gotten a lot of great help over the years um, from people like uh, Grant Thompson, Maria Gannett, uh, Leah Butler Jones has most recently put a lot of work into this website. Uh, so today what I want to do is just walk everybody through how to use the website. Um, and we're going to do that with a weed I went out and found this morning. So it's early April, went out in the backyard and found this weed. I'm going to throw it up here in the top right hand corner of the screen. Uh, and we're just going to go ahead and use the website and, and try and figure out what this weed is. So uh, to start, you know, I just typed in Cornell Weed ID on Google. And first uh, thing that pops up is our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Uh, and we got our first decision here, right? So is it a grass-like or broadleaf weed-like? Um, so, you know, pretty obviously, as you can see up here, this looks like a broadleaf weed. I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. So now this brings me to, to kind of the main screen here. Um, I can see I've got 118 results. Um, and here's, you know, you can see each weed, the name, and just a general picture there. Um, so, you know, if I wanted to, I could go and click on each one of these and see if it looks like my weed, but uh, really what I'm gonna use is, is the stuff on the left-hand side of the screen here, all these traits that are gonna help me whittle down what, what weed it is. So um, when I'm looking at this weed, and, and you may or may not be able to see it up here in the top right, um, but I see a lot of hairiness and fuzziness on the leaf. So I'm gonna see if any one of these uh, characteristics over here on the left describes that. So scroll down and, and here's where, I, where I'm looking. Uh, tactile, so I see smooth, fuzzy, and rough. And that's, that fuzzy texture is, is definitely what I'm, what I'm seeing on my weed. So I'm gonna click on that. And now we've, we've narrowed things down. So we went from 118 to, to only 16. Um, so again, I could go ahead and scroll through all these and see what they, uh, if they match my weed. But I'm gonna go one more step uh, in, in the stature thing. Looks like a trade I can narrow things down with. And um, you know, based on what I saw outside, spreading is, is the trade it's got. Click on that, and now we're down to three. So I can look at these, and, and I think it, one of these looks def definitely like my weed, but let me check some other ones first, common mallow. So it's got some of the traits I, I selected, but definitely doesn't look like my weed, right? The leaf shape isn't quite right. Um, yellow hawkweed, okay, you know, I'm not seeing that in my weed. Um, definitely, definitely not like my weed. Finally, mouse hair chickweed. Ah, okay. So as, as I think everybody can see, this is, uh, it's got the hairiness on there. Definitely resembles what I've got. Um, and so each weed on, on the website has multiple pictures. So uh, Dr. Cowniffin and, and her team have done a really good job of, of putting in uh, multiple pictures here. You can see the seed size if you want to get really specific, what it looks like as a seedling. So um, you know, there it is, pretty quick way to, to identify mouse ear chickweed. Um, now I can go down here, some information on, uh, you know, life cycle and traits and some identifying characteristics. Um, and then, of course, I can also look at controls, right? So I click on that tab. Um, I scroll down here and I've got control options. So uh, conventional pesticides, uh, I think these are uh, New York specific. So if we don't have a certain herbicide label in New York, it's not gonna be on here, but um, so you've got those, and then you've got reduced risk and minimum risk options too. So for K through 12 managers, K through 12 grounds managers here in New York, uh, they have restrictions on conventional pesticide use. So um, in most cases, they're limited to these reduced or, or minimum risk options. Um, so you know that's a, that's a great way to use this tool. Uh, it gets you to a screen, you can identify your weed, and you can learn a little bit more about things. Um, one more thing I like, uh, and it's a new feature on this website, is the pesticide-free management tab. So this is something Aaliyah Butler-Jones has worked a lot on recently. Um, again, geared towards our K-12 through managers where they've got kind of these unique situations, fence lines, gravels, mulch areas, right? So we can go in here and we can learn about uh, non-pesticide ways to, to control weeds in these areas. So it gives you options for mechanical control, uh, barriers, how you're going to set up that fence line in a way that's going to allow you to manage those weeds uh, uh, better and more efficiently. 
thermal weeding, something we've studied here at our turf grass program, uh, thermal weeding, right? So let's burn those plants up. Here's some options, um, things to think about. Um, so, you know, a great addition to this website, I think has been this um, pesticide free management area. Again, these are kind of uh, problem areas where, you know, you're going to think about non, non uh, pesticide products and, and their control options. So um, that's a quick overview of the uh, Turf and Landscape Weed ID website. I uh, hope everyone found that useful and, and hopefully you can keep this uh, place bookmarked in your browser. Now I did it on the computer. You can of course do it on your phone too. So um, always available if you're out in the field and, and looking to do something out there. So I hope everyone has found this helpful and uh, thanks for watching. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.